Now, well, for more on this, I'm joined by Afshin Malavi of John Hopkins University. He's a fellow at their School of Advanced International Studies. Afshin, thanks for joining us here. We just heard there, Saudi Arabia's got financial troubles. Right. It's got a fractious neighbor with Iran. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the most volatile regions in the world. Why would a Chinese president want or need to go to this region now? Well, you know, Owen, I, I think there's three reasons. Oil, oil, and oil. Uh, you know, and, and, and I mean, I, I say this in all seriousness because when you look at China's oil imports, about a quarter of their oil imports come from either Saudi Arabia or Iran. Saudi Arabia is the most significant uh, oil relationship that China has right now. And it's not simply a transactional relationship either, about a million barrels a day going from Saudi Arabia to China. Uh, Saudi Aramco, the state-owned national oil company, invests in downstream refineries in China. The petrochemical company in Saudi Arabia, Sabic, has joint ventures with Chinese counterparts. So there is an actual strategic commercial uh, relationship between China and Saudi Arabia, and it's very important for President Xi Jinping to check in on Saudi Arabia and Iran. And what's interesting is when you look at the CCTV map of Xi Jinping's visit that I saw uh, earlier, uh, the Middle East North Africa was totally absent. So it's about time he visited the region where China sources 50% of its oil from, the Middle East. So this is really China going to one of its, if not its most important supplier in the world and, uh, and, and actually sort of putting a face to many of the people that do that. You mentioned Iran there. Uh, China, of course, was still trading with Iran while these Western sanctions were in place. So it's no stranger. That must give it a competitive advantage. It, it, it certainly does. And there's also something else at play here. Uh, you know, Xi Jinping's visit to Iran shortly after the implementation day, so-called implement, implementation day, when the sanctions are gradually being lifted from Iran, sends a very powerful signal to the Iranian oil industry and the Iranian commercial sector. And, and the reason it's very important is because for the past two or three years, as you stated correctly, China maintained a presence in Iran. But they also ruffled some feathers in Iran because the view was that they were dragging their feet on some projects. They were exploiting the situation by uh, uh, you know, extracting premiums on certain projects. And, and, the, and there's, there's a whole group of bankers in Iran and oil industry folks who you know, have a little bit of frustration with, with Chinese state-owned companies. But the Xi Jinping visit can electrify the relationship again and send a very powerful signal to Iran. Are you saying it's been difficult for Iranian business to do business with China despite all these sanctions in place from the West? Yes, absolutely. So the China, what would happen is, you know, the Chinese state-owned energy companies would come into Iran and they would continue to maintain some business, but they too had to abide by these sanctions. Uh, and the, the, the problem also in Iran was that there was a lot of uh, Iranian oil being sent to China, uh, and, and Iran had to open these escrow accounts in Chinese banks um, for which they had to buy Chinese goods. Well, there's a lot of industrial machinery you can buy from China. The, the view in Tehran was that some of this was a little bit overpriced. Let's just touch on the One Belt, One Road. This is China's yes. new Silk Road, Ashin. Um, it, it, well, I think we have a map of it that we, we can throw up. As you mentioned, there's this vast area where China has a lot of interest, perhaps hasn't been in. This new One Belt, One Road passes sort of through Iran. We can see there, it doesn't really go into Egypt. Can China join the dots with these countries, bearing in mind that Iran and Saudi Arabia really aren't very friendly with each other at the moment? That's right. I mean, that's another piece of this, this visit that, that's very important. Can Xi Jinping, can he play broker? between Tehran and Riyadh. Because China famously doesn't pick sides. Exactly, exactly. And, and, and he has good relations with both sides. I mean, we saw the, the, the Royal Mounted Guard of Saudi Arabia, four F-15 fighter jets escorting Xi Jinping's plane in Saudi airspace. Clearly, he has very good relations with Saudi Arabia, but also with Iran. So can he play in a broker in this relationship? Well, won't, won't China have to pick a side? If there's one region in the world where you might have to pick a side, this is it, isn't it? You know, I think in, 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 the, in this case, they won't have to pick a side. And the reason is, because China is so valuable to Saudi Arabia and China is so valuable to Iran. Uh, and in both cases, they don't want to alienate their most important customer for their most important commodity. All right, Ashwin Malavi, many thanks indeed for talking to us.